Do you want to know everything that has happened to the X-Men? Well, today I'm going to bring you that. We're going to look at every major event in the timeline that is the X-Men. We're not going to be going into the character-driven development. We're going to be looking at the overarching X-Men storylines. Hopefully this will give you enough knowledge that you can jump into X-Men tomorrow. Now, originally appearing in X-Men number one in September 1963, the X-Men were created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. With the success of Marvel's other heroes, Stan Lee decided to create a new team and just said that they all got their powers from mutations. But the mutants were feared by and ostracized by the world. So the X-Men were formed by Charles Xavier to help both protect mutant and mankind and help build towards a world of peace. The original team consisted of Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Angel, Beast, and Iceman, and ran until it was canceled in 1969 due to poor sales. Now, when most people think of the X-Men, they really think of the revival of the series, which began with the Chris Claremont era in giant-sized X-Men number one in 1975. With this introduction, we saw a new team. They were Colossus, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Thunderbird, Storm, Banshee, and Sunfire. And they were tasked by Professor X to rescue the original X-Men from the island of Krakoa. After the mission, the team would change slightly, with a new team being led by Cyclops and Jean Grey joining once more. The X-Men would then go on to become one of Marvel's most popular books for several decades, with some major events and plots weaving throughout dozens of books involving mutant kind. So let's take a look at some of the major events of the X-Men universe. Massive stories that would take place during the Chris Claremont era, which still have effects on mutant kind today. The Phoenix Saga. This arc begins with the X-Men involved in a mission in space. When Jean is bombarded by cosmic radiation, she is mutated further and reaches her ultimate abilities as a telepath. For a brief time, she is a being of pure thought, but manages to reform herself and continue her life as Jean Grey. Now taking on the persona of the Phoenix, she rejoins the X-Men. She also places psychic barriers against her own powers to maintain her humanity. However, her new powers make her the target of the Mastermind, who believes that if he can seduce her and turn her evil, this will give him a spot on the Hellfire Club, an evil group of mutants. Taking on the role of Jason Wingard, Mastermind projects illusions into Jean's mind that she had an ancestor named Lady Grey, who was the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club. Eventually, these illusions overtake Jean's personality, and she comes to believe that she is the Black Queen and turns against the X-Men. But Cyclops, who at this time is in love with Jean, well, honestly, he's in love with Jean forever, tries to rescue her going so far as to have a psychic battle with the Mastermind. When Psychic Scott is killed, this snaps Jean out of her illusions, but it also breaks the barriers that she had placed against her powers. Now calling herself the Dark Phoenix, she turns on Mastermind, using her powers to let him experience godhood, thus driving him insane. She then throws off the shackles of Jean Grey, Dark Phoenix turning against the X-Men and defeating them. With this done, she leaves the Earth and travels to a distant galaxy. But the journey exhausts her, and she decides to have a little snack of a star. The star goes supernova and wipes out the only planet with intelligent life in that system. A Shi'ar battleship sees this and engages the Dark Phoenix, but is easily destroyed. But before its destruction, the ship sends a message to Empress Leandra, warning her of what's happening. The Empress goes before a galactic council, and they rule that the Dark Phoenix is too dangerous to be left alive, and must be destroyed. Jean eventually returns to Earth, where she is conflicted with her emotions as Jean Grey and her new destructive godlike abilities. Eventually, she's confronted by Charles Xavier, who fights her in a psychic duel, and manages to place a barrier around her mind once more that returns her to her normal Jean Grey persona. It also dampens her powers. With Jean back, she once again takes her place on the team. But the X-Men are taken by the Shi'ar, and they place Jean on trial for what she did as the Dark Phoenix. When she's sentenced to death, Charles demands that Jean have a trial by combat. With the X-Men to fight against the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. The fight takes place in the blue area of the moon, and the X-Men are easily defeated by the Imperial Guard. Jean and Scott make a final stand, but Scott is seemingly killed. This overwhelms Xavier's psychic blocks, and the Dark Phoenix rises once more. 
The X-Men try to fight against their former friend, but they are once again defeated, though Jean regains her personality again. To make sure she doesn't hurt anyone else and to save her friends, Jean sacrifices herself with the use of alien technology on the moon. Star Jammers During this time, the X-Men also met the Star Jammers, a group of space pirates who were led by Captain Corsair, who it was discovered was actually Christopher Summers, the father of Scott and Alex Summers. The Star Jammers went on several adventures with the X-Men and even fought alongside them to defeat an evil Shi'ar Emperor and place Empress Leandra on the throne. The Star Jammers would then return several times to aid the X-Men and the New Mutants. Days of Future Past The Days of Future Past arc took place in Uncanny X-Men 141 and 142. In the far-off future of 2013, the mutants are hunted down by the rise of the Sentinels, which now control the majority of the United States, putting the few remaining mutants and superhumans into work camps. As fear of a nuclear holocaust draws closer, the remaining X-Men send Kitty Pride's consciousness back into her body of her younger self in 1980 so that she can stop the assassination of Senator Robert Kelly by the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. She works with the X-Men to stop the assassination, and when she is successful, her future consciousness disappears, leaving the X-Men to wonder if they in fact changed the future. The Trial of Magneto, 1981 edition. In the Uncanny X-Men number 200, Magneto willingly surrenders himself to the authorities, fearing that his ongoing actions are actually hurting mutant civil rights. Magneto is put on trial by the World Court for his actions and is aided by Charles Xavier. When the trial is attacked by the Von Strucker twins, who are out for revenge against Magneto, Xavier is wounded and taken away by the Star Jammers. But Charles asks Magneto to take over as the leader of the X-Men. Eric does so for a small amount of time before the X-Men are forced to fight against the Avengers. Upon learning that Captain America has no prejudice against Magneto for being a mutant, Eric surrenders himself to the Avengers so that he can stand trial a second time. This time, Eric believes that he won't receive a fair trial as the judge is anti-mutant. Using technology, he manages to mentally make the judge find him not guilty. However, this sparks anti-mutant sentiments around the world, as Eric realizes he did more harm than good for mutant cause. God Loves, Man Kills Later, anti-mutant sentiments would continue to rise as Reverend William Stryker came into power. After he kills his wife and deformed mutant son, Stryker begins to preach that the mutants are an abomination and that the Lord wants them wiped out. Stryker kidnaps Charles Xavier, planning to use him to wipe out the world's mutants with his telepathic powers. The X-Men must team up with Magneto to save both Xavier and mutant kind. The X-Men manage to trick Stryker into revealing his plan to the world, defeating him, taking him into custody. With Xavier saved, Magneto bids farewell to the X-Men, reminding them that there will always be men like Stryker that mean to do him harm. The Mutant Massacre Next up is the Mutant Massacre, which saw the Marauders, a group of mutant assassins and criminals normally employed by Mr. Sinister, traveling to New York and attacking the Morlocks. They ended up murdering a large number of them. This brought the X-Men and X-Factor into the Morlock tunnels to fight against the Marauders separately. But both teams suffered several casualties and Angel is believed to be dead, forcing the team to retreat though they are aided by the other heroes of New York. Sabretooth, a member of the Marauders at the time, follows the X-Men back to the mansion, where he destroys Cerebro, and he prepares to murder the rest of the Morlocks under Xavier's protection, but is stopped by Psylocke. When the rest of the X-Men arrive, Sabretooth escapes by throwing himself off a cliff, though he is still pursued by Wolverine. The Fall of the Mutants Fall of the Mutants is another event that crossed Uncanny X-Men, X-Factor, and New Mutants. In Uncanny X-Men, the team heads to Texas to look for Storm, who has been depowered by technology created by the Mutant Forge. While there, they're attacked by the Freedom Force, a group of former criminals now working for the U.S. government under the command of Mystique. As the teams fight, they realize that something is happening in Dallas as strange effects and creatures and people from other times are now overrunning the city. The teams decide to work together to protect the civilians and figure out what exactly is going on. Meanwhile, Storm and Forge find themselves on an alternate Earth, where time moves differently for them. In several years that span only moments on Earth-616, the main Earth, Forge is able to build a device that gives Storm back her powers. The two then return to the main Earth to discover the chaos that is going on. 
It's revealed that during his time in Vietnam, Forge used shamanistic magic to call forth a demon to punish his enemies. The adversary is the one that is plaguing the city. Forge is forced to cast the spell again to banish the adversary, and the X-Men sacrifice themselves to defeat the demon. But the goddess, Roma, takes pity on them for their sacrifice and restores their lives. Now the world thinks that the X-Men are dead, and Roma casts a spell so that no form of surveillance can see the X-Men other than the human eye. She also gives the Siege Perilous, which will allow the X-Men to reset time if they are ever discovered. Meanwhile, over in X-Factor, the team is brought to Apocalypse and offered a place at his side in his war against humans. The team refuses, and they're forced to fight against the Four Horsemen. It is then revealed that the Horseman of Death is Angel, their former teammate who they believed was killed. When the team is defeated, Apocalypse forces them to watch as his horsemen attack New York City, but the team escapes and tries to defeat the horsemen. Iceman has the idea to fake his own death with an ice statue, which causes Archangel to be overcome with guilt and turn against Apocalypse. Eventually, the team is able to beat Apocalypse back and force him to retreat. Over in New Mutants, the team travels to see their friend Birdbrain and realize that the animator, the one who created him, is creating more Annie men the team attempts to stop him, and Cypher is killed in the process. Now we enter the 90s, which is still written by Chris Claremont for a while. Extinction Agenda. Members of the Genosian Magistrate, Genosia is an island nation that uses mutants as slaves at this time, which include a memory white havoc, attack the mansion, and kidnap several members of the X-Men and new mutants, bringing them to Genosia. There, the cyborg Hodge plans on transferring Warlock's powers to himself. When Wolfsbane tries to rescue her friend, she accidentally kills Warlock in the process. She is then brainwashed and becomes one of the island's mutant slaves. The remaining members of X-Factor, X-Men, and the New Mutants head to Genosha to save their friends, but in the process are captured, though Cyclops does manage to jog Havoc's memory. But the younger Summer's brother believes that he can help the team as a mole and supposedly betrays them all. The mutants eventually escape, and they manage to defeat the Genosian magistrates, bringing down their citadel in the process. After the battle is won, Havoc and Wolfsbane elect to stay on Genosha and try to help bridge the gap between mutants and humans there. Mur Island Saga In this five-part arc, the X-Men head to Mur Island after receiving warnings from Forge and Banshee. They discover that the island and its inhabitants have been overtaken by the Shadow King, and the X-Men are quickly defeated and possessed. From the mansion, Xavier is able to free Colossus from the Shadow King's control and recruit X-Factor to help him launch another assault on Mer Island. When the team discover that the Shadow King has been using Polaris as a link between the physical world and the astral plane, they know they must rescue her to defeat the Shadow King. Xavier heads to Mer Island himself, launching an assault against the Shadow King in the astral world while his team tries to find and free Polaris. Realizing that Xavier's physical body is still being harmed from the battle, Jean Grey and the rest of X-Factor head into the astral plane to help their teacher. Back in the real world, Forge manages to defeat a mind-controlled Psylocke and use her psychic knife to sever the link between Shadow King and Polaris, destroying the Shadow King. After the event, the members of X-Factor joined the X-Men once more. Executioner's Song while speaking at a pro-mutant rally, Professor Xavier is shot by the mutant known as Strife while masquerading as Cable. When the bullet strikes Xavier, he's infected with a techno-organic virus and he begins to die. Elsewhere, the X-Men are attacked by war and famine in order to distract them, while Caliban kidnaps Scott and Jean. It turns out that this is all a plan led by Mr. Sinister, who has been masquerading as Apocalypse and working alongside Strife. With Xavier dying, the X-Men go after X-Force and Cable. The two teams fight, but it eventually comes out that Strife is acting as Cable when Mr. Sinister betrays him. Still believing that Apocalypse is behind Scott and Jean's disappearance, the rest of the X-Men confront him, but they discover that Apocalypse is extremely weak from their last encounter. Apocalypse is then attacked by Strife, who claims that Apocalypse did something to him and now he seeks revenge. Apocalypse seeks shelter with the X-Men and cures Xavier as payment for their protection. Eventually, the team tracks Scott and Jean to Strife's moon base, where they confront them, but Strife has erected a force field that only someone with Summer's DNA can pass through. When Cable passes through and confronts Strife, Havoc comes in, saving Jean and Scott. Cable orders Scott to activate a time vortex that will kill both him and Strife. Scott activates the device, and both Cable and Strife are sucked inside, apparently killing them. 
Afterwards, Scott and Jean questioned whether Cable could possibly be the son that Scott sent into the future after Apocalypse infected him with the techno virus. Fatal Attractions. When the mutant Exodus offers X-Force a place of sanctuary, the team discovers that the place is known as Avalon and is actually Cable's former base of operations that has been augmented by Shi'ar Tech and is now controlled by Magneto, who was thought to have died in the fall of Asteroid M. Cable tries to defeat Magneto and retrieve the base's AI and destroy it. But after gaining control of the AI, Cable is defeated and forced to teleport away. Later, Magneto's acolytes attack the X-Men at the funeral of Colossus' sister, Ileana. Magneto informs the X-Men that they will be using Avalon to wipe humanity from the Earth, and Colossus, with his faith in Xavier wavering, decides to join Magneto's mission. In an effort to stop Magneto, the UN begins the Magneto Protocols, which activates a barrier around the Earth that is supposed to stop Magneto from using his powers. But Magneto creates an EMP that causes havoc around the planet. Xavier leads a strike team against Magneto, and during the battle, Wolverine manages to use his claws to gut the villain. Enraged by the wound, Magneto uses his powers to rip the metal off of Wolverine's bones. This is the story where the adamantium is ripped out of Wolverine. Xavier uses his powers to wipe Magneto's mind, leaving him in a coma. The team rushes Wolverine back to Earth and manages to get him to a hospital. Medical care and Logan's healing factor are the only things that save him. Afterwards, Colossus decides to stay with Magneto's acolytes to try and make sure that they don't go too far. Logan also discovers that his claws are actually a part of his mutation as he now has bone claws. Next, we're on the Phalanx Covenant. When the X-Men are attacked by Phalanx, they discover that the two are arch enemies and are leading the mutant hating group who have been infecting themselves with the techno-organic virus to become something more than human. But Phalanx begins to evolve further and seeks to bring everything into the techno-organic hive mind. With several of their heavy hitters captured, many of the support members of the X-Men and other teams have to fight Phalanx and rescue their friends. After several of the mutant telepaths manage to sever Phalanx's hive net, the group finally is defeated and their Earth hives destroyed. However, across the galaxy is revealed that another group of Phalanx exist and sense their defeat on Earth. Legion Quest A storyline that would have massive consequences, Legion Quest saw the mutant Legion travel to the past to kill Eric Leshner in hopes that by killing Magneto at a younger age, Legion would be able to make amends with his father, Charles Xavier. But the X-Men travel to the past to stop Legion. And in the moment before Magneto is hit with an energy blast, Xavier jumps in the way. The death of Charles drastically alters the future, changing it to Earth 295. Age of Apocalypse. Age of Apocalypse was a massive event that played out across all of Marvel's mutant books at the time. After the Xavier of the past gave his life to protect Eric Leshner from Legion's assault, the entire future has shifted. In this alternate timeline, Magneto started to believe in his friend's dream of a world where mutants and humans could coexist. In this time, Apocalypse chose the moment of Xavier's death to rise up and begin his conquest for the world, creating a world where the mutants are the dominant species. Magneto forms his own X-Men to fight against Apocalypse's campaign against mankind, with a mutant named Lucas Bishop being the only one aware of the changes in the timelines. Lucas approaches Magneto with knowledge of the changes in the timeline, and Magneto begins his quest to change the world back. After Age of Apocalypse is averted, we go into Onslaught. After the events of Age of Apocalypse, the world is returned to the normal 616 timeline. It's revealed that when Xavier wipes Magneto's mind after he ripped the adamantium out of Wolverine's bones, part of his hate-filled consciousness infected Xavier's mind, mixing with Xavier's abilities and becoming a separate entity known as Onslaught. Unknown to Xavier, Onslaught was able to affect the world and began to start a plan to have mutants rise up against the humans. He began to approach powerful mutants to recruit to his cause, wiping their minds afterwards and leaving them only with a memory of his name. As Xavier himself began to doubt his ideals and dream, Onslaught was able to take full control of his body. Approaching the X-Men, he attempted to recruit them to his new dream of enslaving humanity, but the X-Men fought against him and were able to separate Xavier from the Onslaught entity. This made the Onslaught more powerful as the good of Xavier was no longer holding him back. After kidnapping Franklin Richards, Onslaught began his mission of enslaving mankind. 
It took the combined might of the mutant heroes and Earth's mightiest heroes to finally defeat Onslaught, with many of the members of the Avengers believing to have died in the process. It's later revealed that the other heroes weren't killed, but were instead transported to a pocket dimension by Franklin Richards in the Heroes Reborn event. Now, we're not going to cover that because that's not an X-Men event, but it did go into that. Xavier is also arrested for his part in Onslaught. Operation Zero Tolerance. After the events of Onslaught, a man known as Bastion was approached by the government with a new idea about the mutant threat. Known as Operation Zero Tolerance, Bastion uses the new Prime Sentinels and fear-mongering to convince the U.S. government to help him against the mutant threat. Several mutants are attacked and kidnapped, but the X-Men are able to fight against Bastion and save their friends. In the end, Operation Zero Tolerance goes too far and is shut down by S.H.I.E.L.D. It's later revealed that Bastion was just actually Nimrod. Hunt for Xavier. Learning that Xavier has gone missing since he was arrested after the Onslaught attack, the X-Men begin to search for their mentor, which leads them against Cerebro. The mutant detecting device that Xavier created has become sentient. Cerebro is attempting to digitalize all humans on Earth in an effort to create Xavier's dream of a mutant utopia. The X-Men fight against Cerebro and eventually discover that Xavier has been captured by the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. To stop Cerebro, they force the program to mentally link with all of humanity and sense their souls. Doing this causes Cerebro to stop its attack and fade out of existence. Afterwards, Xavier returns to the school and becomes the X-Men's mentor once more. The Twelve. The Twelve is another story arc that saw a possible dark future in Apocalypse's attempt at achieving godhood and wiping out mankind. This saw the prophecy of the Twelve, which is the twelve powerful mutants that would help usher in the destruction of mankind. When the X-Men rush to stop Apocalypse, one of the supposed Twelve, it is revealed that Apocalypse began this prophecy himself long ago, as he needed to gather the Twelve together to usher himself into godhood. After capturing the Twelve, he strapped them into an ancient celestial machine with the intent of siphoning their life energy into a living monolith and then into his own body. Not convoluted at all. But Apocalypse's body was too frail from the centuries of life and he attempted to put his mind in the body of Nate Gray. Unfortunately, Magneto was also depowered at this time and the machine didn't work as it was supposed to. In an attempt to bypass Magneto, Apocalypse overloaded the machine and the living monolith went into a frenzy. While half of the X-Men fought against the monolith, the other half fought against Apocalypse. After defeating Apocalypse and exposing his rotting body encased in his armor, Apocalypse made one final attempt to take over Nate Gray, but Cyclops took Nate's place, sacrificing himself. After the event, Jean left the team to take time to mourn the loss of her husband. Eve of Destruction after Colossus died in order to cure the legacy virus, Magneto begins to question Xavier's ability to lead his team in the very dream of mutants and mankind living together in peace. So he attacks the X-Mansion, kidnaps Xavier, and brings him to Genosha. There, Xavier is crucified, and Magneto uses technology to block his powers. With this done, Magneto proclaims that he will now begin building an army on Genosha with the intent of taking full control of the world and daring any human nation to strike at him first. The X-Men are in a weakened state, as most of the members of the team have taken a leave of absence or retired. It's up to Wolverine, Jean, and Cyclops to put together a makeshift team to go to Genosha and stop Magneto once again. Aided by this team, the group travel to Genosha and save Xavier, who manages to use his powers to stop Magneto from ripping the metal out of Wolverine's bones once again. Though he is defeated, Magneto refuses to stop his plans to take over the world. Wolverine stabs him in the gut once more, and the team leaves Magneto on the square, bleeding out. Once retired to the mansion, they have a victory drink. We now enter the era of the X-Men that began in the early 2000s. This era was written by Grant Morrison and saw the team take on a new black and yellow suit that fell in line with the X-Men movies in a classic team lineup. E is for Extinction. The X-Men team learn of a lost master mold in the jungles of Ecuador, and before they can destroy it, they discover that it has been overtaken by a new villain known as Cassandra Nova. Nova orders the Sentinels to attack the island of Genosha, and while she battles with Beast, Cyclops, and Wolverine, the island nation is wiped out. With Nova defeated and imprisoned in the mansion, 
The X-Men search the island for any survivors and discover one of their former enemies, Emma Frost. They bring Emma to the mansion to help her recover, but she quickly decides to leave to get revenge for the destruction of Genosha. However, Cassandra Nova manages to escape from her imprisonment and gains control of Cerebro, using it to take over Xavier's body. She shoots Xavier, now trapped in Cassandra's body, before the team learns the truth. Days later, the team is trying to deal with the stresses of their everyday lives when they are shocked to see Xavier, who's actually Cassandra Nova, go on live TV and out themselves as a mutant to the entire world. Planet X. After the defeat of Cassandra Nova and Xavier being returned to his body, Magneto once again returns under the disguise of the mutant Zorn. After taking over Manhattan, Magneto once again proclaims his plans of overthrowing mankind and making Planet X a place for all mutant kind. From New York, Magneto launches several attacks against mankind, becoming more bloodthirsty than he has ever been in the past. Magneto is eventually defeated, and Xavier reveals that in his death, Magneto was actually becoming a symbol of change for mutant kind. By seeing what he had become now, the mutants have turned on him, showing that even as he took control of Manhattan, Magneto hadn't tried to actually help any of the mutants that followed him, instead only focusing on his war against humanity. Realizing that mutant kind now thought of him as a fraud, Magneto begged to be killed. Literally begged. Jean tries to help Eric, but is struck down by a stray magnetic pulse and begins to die. Wolverine is enraged at seeing Jean die potentially again and cuts off Magneto's head. As Jean lay dying in Scott's arms, she begs him to move on from her, as all she seems to do is die. However, after some unknown time in the future, a phoenix egg is discovered on the moon. Here comes tomorrow. 150 years later, the future is a dark place. Remnants of the X-Men are fighting against the Crawlers, a genetically engineered army of night crawlers under the command of a beast, an ancient Hank McCoy. It's revealed that after the death of Jean, Scott Summers decided to move away from the X-Men, refusing to restart the school and a relationship with Emma Frost. Because of this, Hank tried to take over the school, but the strain was too much for him. He began to take the mutant-enhancing drug known as Kick and was infected by the ancient being known as Sublime. In the future, the remnants of the X-Men, now working with Cassandra Nova, fight against Sublime his army, and the recently returned Phoenix. But Phoenix eventually remembers her past as Jean and pulls Sublime out of Beast's body. Afterwards, she journeys to the White Hot Room and is instructed by past and future hosts of the Phoenix that she needs to fix the timeline. As Jean, she reaches back through time and pushes Scott into taking over the school and even starting his relationship with Emma Frost, thus negating the entire dark future. The X-Men would now be entering another new era. This one is headed by Joss Whedon, and he took over writing duties on the Astonishing X-Men. Gone were the leather costumes, and the X-Men returned to a more traditional look, though the team lineup would mostly remain the same. The Gifted The Gifted saw the X-Men restart the Xavier Institute, with Scott and Emma acting as headmaster and leader to the X-Men. This saw the team trying to discover the origins of the supposed cure for the X-Gene, though it was discovered that the cure came from the experimentation of an unknown mutant. This series also marked the return of Colossus, who had died four years previously when he sacrificed himself to cure the legacy virus. House of M the House of M event began when Charles and Eric were trying to take care of Wanda Maximoff on the ruined island of Genosha, trying to keep her calm and stabilize her reality-warping powers. Charles calls the members of the X-Men and the Avengers and several others to decide Wanda's fate. And while they try to decide what's best for her, many of the mutants gathered realize that if humankind finds out about a mentally unstable mutant with the ability to end the world in a single word, humankind will once again turn completely against the mutants. So, the heroes decide that they should speak to Wanda before making a decision. But Quicksilver travels to Genosha to warn Wanda and Eric that the heroes are coming to kill her. When the heroes arrive in Genosha, they discover that Wanda is missing, and the heroes suddenly begin to disappear. Then, in the blink of an eye, the world is remade. Events of the past have changed drastically, and the mutants are now the dominant species on the planet. Every hero in the Marvel Universe is changed. Steve Rogers was never frozen and is now living as an old retired soldier. Carol Danvers is now the most popular non-mutant hero. Spider-Man is a celebrity and married to Gwen Stacy. Wolverine is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. leading the team of mutants and is also in a relationship with Mystique. 
But Wolverine realizes the truth as he now has access to all of his memories. With the help of Luke Cage and Lila Miller, a young girl who has the ability to make heroes remember the true world, they begin to gather heroes to put a stop to Magneto's dynasty, believing that it was Magneto who forced Wanda to create this world. As the battle begins, the heroes discover that Wanda created this world after Quicksilver suggested changing the world and giving everyone just what they truly wanted. After the battle ends, Wanda decides that the mutants are the true problem with the world and utters the words, no more mutants. Reality is put back to how it was, except that only a few hundred mutants still have their powers. At the end of the event, Xavier is still missing, and the science heroes of the Earth maintain that that power does not simply disappear, and that the lost mutant power is stored somewhere. Also, there's a red glowing ring beginning to circle the Earth. Deadly Genesis. In Deadly Genesis, we learn the truth about Charles Xavier and how someone with the ability to read minds, control their thoughts, and erase memories might not always have the best intentions. It's revealed that way back in Giant Size X-Men, number one, Charles actually put together two teams of mutants to try and rescue the original X-Men from Krakoa. The first team was led by Vulcan, and when his team was wiped out, he absorbed their energy and slipped into a coma. When Krakoa was sent into space, Vulcan went with it. Scott was aware of these events, but Xavier wiped his memories so that Scott could lead the new team. After House of M, the mutant energy that was released into space awoke Vulcan, who returned to Earth looking for revenge. Now incredibly powerful, Vulcan manages to defeat several of the X-Men and even kills Banshee. He eventually is defeated by Rachel Summers, but he then flees into space. Having learned the truth about these events, Scott decides that Xavier is no longer welcome at the X-Mansion, and he exiles him from the team. Endangered Species Following the events of M-Day, Beast begins to travel the world trying to find a way to reverse what Wanda did to reality. Working alongside Dark Beast, the two try several different ways to bring the mutants back, but they are unsuccessful. Believing that maybe magic could change the effects, Beast goes to speak with Doctor Strange and learns the fullest extent of Wanda's spell, discovering that it not only affects their world, but it actually is woven into the very fabric of the multiverse itself. Strange believes that he could eventually reverse the spell with enough preparation, but to attempt it now would actually destroy the very fabric of reality. With no other options, Beast attempts to find Wanda and discovers her on the streets of Transia, though discovering that Wanda seems to have no memories of her previous life as the Scarlet Witch. Messiah Complex as the mutants continue to struggle with their dwindling numbers, it suddenly comes to the X-Men's attention of a new mutant being activated. The first since M-Day. When the X-Men travel to Alaska to try and locate this new mutant, they discover that the Marauders and the Reavers have both been fighting over her. She's also being hunted by the villain known as Predator X. As Cyclops begins to put together teams to find this new mutant and protect her, Forge also learns that the birth of this new mutant has created two new timelines where mutants survive. Also, something new since Wanda cast her spell. He sends multiple men's duplicates into the possible futures to learn about them. In one, Jamie and Lila Miller discover a world where the mutants are kept in concentration camps after this child accidentally killed millions of people. The forge of this world also travels back to the present with the intent of killing the new messiah. In the present, everyone is fighting for control over the new mutant, though she is eventually kidnapped by Gambit and brought to Mer Island for Sinister, though it is revealed that Sinister is actually Mystique in disguise who plans on using the child to heal Rogue. When all of the mutants converge on Mer Island, it is Cable who finally arrives to rescue the child, taking her into the future in order to protect her. After these events, Cyclops completely disbands the X-Men. Cable is then seen in the future with the child in his arms, knowing that the hard part now begins. This series would be followed by Manifest Destiny, which would see various heroes of the X-Men dealing with the fallout of disbanding, such as Wolverine hunting down Mystique and Cable trying to protect the child, now known as Hope, from the murderous Bishop. Utopia after the events of Messiah Complex, anti-mutant sentiment has taken a violent turn in the United States and the government has proposed limited mutant reproduction. Defense is now in control of Norman Osborn after the events of Secret Invasion, which was a Marvel-wide event, not X-Men, and he has established Hammer and his Dark Avengers. As anti-mutant riots begin to start in San Francisco, members of the X-Men arrive to help. Facing off against members of the Dark Avengers, Osborn also unveils his own team of Hammer-sanctioned X-Men, now led by Emma Frost. He also shows that he's working alongside Charles Xavier, who calls for Scott Summers to turn himself in and step down from leading the mutants. 
As the X-Men fight against the likes of the Dark Avengers and the Dark X-Men, Beast is captured and begun to be experimented on by Dark Beast. Along with several other mutants and the real Charles Xavier, it is revealed that the fake Charles is Mystique again. When is it not? And it is later revealed that Emma Frost is secretly working against Osborn this entire time at Scott's request. The X-Men establish and defend Utopia Island, which is created from the fallen bits of Asteroid M off of the coast of San Francisco. Scott goes on the news and declares Utopia as a safe haven for the mutants that is outside of U.S. jurisdiction. After the Dark Avengers and the Dark X-Men are defeated, Osborn declares that he is victorious by defeating the mutants and exiling them to their own island, claiming that they are no longer welcome in the United States. Nation X with Utopia now established, the mutants try to live their life in peace. While the story would showcase smaller character moments and yet more groups trying to kill the mutants, the main event that happens is the return of Magneto. Magneto arrives at Utopia and commends Cyclops for finally bringing mutant kind together, claiming that he has done what neither Eric nor Charles could do. While Charles doesn't believe that Eric has come in peace, he explains that he went into space and had the high evolutionary give his powers back. Eric planned on restoring every mutant's powers, but the machine that was used was conveniently destroyed in the process. Magneto declares that he wishes to work alongside Cyclops and his X-Men, and Scott agrees, informing Eric that there is still hope for the mutant's future in Hope Summers, who is somewhere in the timeline being protected by Cable. While others still don't believe in Magneto's intentions, he does aid the mutants in the defense of Utopia from a group of mutant-eating monsters. Necrosha. The Necrosha event sees the mutant vampire Selene attempting to reach godhood by using the techno-organic virus to resurrect an army of undead mutants. She takes control of Genosha and renames it to Necrosha and uses her assault against Utopia. While the X-Men and the X-Force fight against her army of resurrected mutants, she does eventually reach her godhood though it doesn't last long as she's stabbed by Warpath with a special dagger that kills her. Afterwards, most of the members of X-Force would disband again. Curse of the Mutants. At the beginning of the story, Dracula is killed by his son, Zarius, who has aligned the various sects of the vampire nation so that the vampires can take their place as rulers of the world. Later, Jubilee is infected by a created vampire virus and is brought into the vampire nation, though it is revealed that Jubilee being infected was merely a trap for the X-Men and Wolverine. Cyclops decides that the only way to fight against the vampire nation is to resurrect Dracula, though Blade, who is now working with the X-Men, believes this to be a bad idea. Eventually, Wolverine is bitten and joins the ranks of Zarius' vampire army. But Dracula is then resurrected. He declares to the X-Men that he will deal with this matter himself. The Vampire Nation launches their assault on Utopia, with Wolverine leading the charge and cutting a path through the mutants. But Cyclops reveals that he had nanobots placed into Wolverine's bloodstream to shut down his healing factor, allowing him to be infected. After the nanobots are deactivated, Wolverine is cured by himself and turns on the vampires. The monsters are then defeated, with Dracula killing his own son and taking control of the Vampire Nation once again. For a brief moment, Dracula thinks about continuing the assault on Utopia, but Scott manages to bluff his way out of the conflict. Dracula departs and allows the X-Men to take Jubilee. She's kept in Utopia in isolation, with Blade commenting that she needs to be put down, but Wolverine threatens him, so Blade takes his leave, leaving the X-Men to wonder if they can cure their friend of her vampire powers. Age of X. The Age of X event is another alternate timeline event. In this world, Magneto rules Fortress X, an island that is under constant assault from the humans. Everyone has different lives within the Age of X, such as Rogue being Reaper, who absorbs the memories of mutants who fall in battle so that their memories will live on. Eventually, it's revealed that the Age of X is actually a reality created by Legion. After Dr. Nemesis tried to restore his mind, it created this reality to protect the Legion persona. After everything is put back to the way it was supposed to be, the mutants still remember the Age of X reality. Schism. Cyclops goes before the UN to plead the case of shutting down all Sentinel programs throughout the world, but the UN is attacked by Quentin Quire and the Sentinels as a plot by the new members of the Hellfire Club. After the battle is ended, Quentin is then returned to Utopia. Logan thinks that they should turn the young mutant in for his crimes, but Scott disagrees, starting the schism between the two. 
Because of the attack, the Sentinels are activated around the world, and they begin to target humans as well. As the X-Men go to meet this threat, Cyclops begins to put the younger mutants on the front line, claiming that if anyone wants to fight, they should be allowed. Though Logan continues to disagree with the idea of putting children on the front lines. Eventually, a Super Sentinel attacks Utopia, and Cyclops uses the younger X-Men in the battle. Logan has finally had enough, and the argument comes to blows. In the end, the mutant nation is fractured again! as Logan decides he can't live on Utopia with the way Cyclops has been running things. He leaves and takes anyone with him who agrees with him. Avengers vs. X-Men With the warning that the Phoenix Force is returning to Earth, it is believed that it is being drawn by Hope Summers, the child that Cable took into the future to raise properly and then brought back to the current day. The supposed Messiah of mutant kind. The Avengers travel to Utopia to request that they take Hope into custody so that they can protect her from the Phoenix. But Cyclops refuses, and the Avengers begin to fight against the X-Men. Hope manages to escape as everyone is trying to control her, and her powers are growing stronger the closer the Phoenix gets to Earth. After several battles between the Avengers and the X-Men, Hope and Wolverine end up on the blue area of the moon. There, the Phoenix finally arrives. Realizing that she can't fight against the Phoenix's control, Hope demands that Wolverine kill her. But Iron Man blasts the Phoenix Force with a disruptor ray, which splits it into five fragments. These fragments are then absorbed by Cyclops, Emma Frost, Magic, Colossus, and Namor. And the five quickly defeat the Avengers and fly back to Earth with hope. The Phoenix Five begin to change things for the better on the Earth, providing food, water, and energy to the entire world. They are also forcibly stopping all armed conflicts throughout the planet. Though they are turning the world into a paradise, the Avengers decide that the Phoenix Five need to be stopped before their powers grow too strong. They attempt to capture Hope, causing more conflicts with the X-Men. Believing that the Avengers will not stop their attacks, Namor decides to lead his forces against Wakanda, where the Avengers and Hope have taken refuge. But the Phoenix Force abandons him, going only to the remaining four, making them more powerful. They're also approached by Charles Xavier, who demands that they stop their actions for forcing the world to change to their will. But the Phoenix Four do not stop and begin to imprison those who speak and act against them. Several members of the X-Men begin to work against the Phoenix Four, realizing that what they are doing is wrong. The Phoenix Four then begin to fight amongst themselves to make themselves even more powerful. In the final battles is the members of both the X-Men and the Avengers that have launched into an assault against their Phoenix Two, the only two remaining members at this time, Cyclops and Emma Frost. Cyclops then defeats Emma Frost to make himself the most powerful Phoenix member, and he fights against both Magneto and Xavier. Becoming the Dark Phoenix, Cyclops actually uses his power to murder Professor Xavier, his mentor of many years. In the end, it is up to Hope, who has been training in Kun Lun and Scarlet Witch to defeat the Phoenix Force. With Scott defeated, the Phoenix Force enters Hope and she uses its power to reestablish mutant kind. Afterwards, Wanda uses her magic to wish away the Phoenix Force. After all of this, Scott is arrested for his crimes, though he is happy that the mutants are a thing once more. Steve Rogers decides that the heroes have been divided for too long, establishing a new group of Avengers that has both human and mutant heroes on its roster. All new, all different, X-Men! After the events of Avengers vs. X-Men, Scott manages to escape prison and start a new team to fight against mutant persecution. Anti-mutant sentiment has been on the rise as the mutant population has returned. Seeing what Scott is doing, Beast gets a brilliant idea of traveling back in time and bringing the original teenage X-Men into the present so that they can talk some sense into Scott and the others, trying to bring together the divided X-Men. The young team confronts Scott and his team, which includes Emma and Magneto, about his actions, though he believes they are young and naive. Eventually, the young X-Men decide to stay in the present and try to help fix it, believing that they will eventually return to their original time at the exact moment that they left it. Battle for the Atom! With the original five, aka the O5 X-Men, deciding to stay in the present, Kitty Pride decides to lead them. But things get a little weird when a group of X-Men arrive from the future, led by a future version of O5 Gene, and declare that the O5 need to return to their time before something awful happens that creates a bad future. The O5 refuse to listen, though, and seek shelter with Scott and his team of X-Men who agree to help. But they're hunted by the X-Men and the future group, who tries to force them to go back in time. Past Beast and Iceman decide to head to the future and discover that the future group of X-Men are actually disguised members of the future Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. 
they bring the actual future X-Men back to the present to help fight against the fake team. The final battle causes the future O5 gene to be destroyed, and the teams never learn what horrible event was creating the alternate reality. Angered that the X-Men would try to force them to leave, the O5 decided to join Scott and his team with Kitty going to continue to try and lead them. The death of Wolverine. After a microverse virus shuts down his healing factor, Logan decides that he doesn't want to try and reactivate it. He decides that he's going to let the adamantium bonded to his skeleton finally kill him. But a bounty has been placed on his head and Logan is determined to find out who put it there. His search leads him to Dr. Cornelius, who is in charge of the Weapon X program. The doctor is still trying to replicate what they did to Wolverine, but they can't replicate his healing factor. When he learns that Wolverine no longer has his healing factor, he sets his final experiments against the mutant. Logan manages to defeat them before Dr. Cornelius can bond with adamantium. But in the process, Logan is dosed with liquid metal. As Cornelius dies, Logan is slowly encased in adamantium and looks back on his life, declaring that it was enough. He dies in an adamantium statue. Axis. After the death of Charles Xavier, his body was recovered by Red Skull, who harvested his mind and gained telepathic abilities. This allowed the Red Skull to create the Red Onslaught. A gathering of X-Men and Avengers set out to defeat Red Onslaught. And during the battle, Wanda and Doctor Doom accidentally cast an inversion spell that changes the moral leanings of everyone present. This leads to another massive event where the heroes are all fighting against each other and eventually the X-Men try to use a gene bomb to kill all the humans on Earth. Eventually the battle is won when a second inversion spell is cast and everyone returns to their natural state, though Red Skull does manage to escape. And some individuals weren't reverted back to their original mindset and it made for some interesting weird stuff going on in Marvel at the time. Apocalypse War the Apocalypse War is actually spread out over three different X-Books and has three separate storylines. An extraordinary X-Men, the O5, are trying to stop an arc of mutant embryos and are sent thousands of years into the future into a world ruled by Apocalypse. Storm and Nightcrawler head into the future to save the X-Men, but now must battle against Apocalypse's new horsemen. This includes versions of Marvel heroes and the mutant Colossus, who was captured after journeying with the other X-Men. After defeating Apocalypse, the X-Men travel back to the present, but Colossus disappears and is found by Clan Akaba and is transformed into the current horsemen of war. Meanwhile, over in Uncanny X-Men, Psylocke and Magneto are trying to discover what has happened to Warren Worthington. They track him down to a town in Colorado where apparently the cured Warren is worshipped by a cult. But Psylocke discovers that Clan Akaba has apparently been cloning Archangel with the purpose of using him to wipe out Earth. While Psylocke and the others fight to defeat Clan Akaba, Warren merges with his Archangel clones to become something totally new. When the clan is defeated, this new Archangel swears to find his place in the world. Meanwhile, over in all new, all different X-Men, Evan, the son of Apocalypse, is celebrating his 16th birthday. Though he doesn't seem happy because he's unsure of his future in this world. Evan accidentally is sent back in time with Hank and has to work alongside the original in Sabaner to return to his timeline. Death of X. The Death of X event saw the Terrigen Mist become lethal to any mutant that is exposed to it. Initially, the mutants and the Inhumans try to work together to solve this problem, but teams travel throughout the world trying to protect anyone in the path of a Terrigen Cloud. Things then turn hostile as Scott begins to accuse the Inhumans of harming mutants to help their own people. As the battles begin to start, Scott eventually confronts Medusa and Black Bolt about the event. He seemingly forces Black Bolt to strike and kill him. Afterwards, both groups finally decide that they need to work together to stop the fighting, and it's also revealed that Scott apparently died at the start of the event from Terrigen exposure. The Scott we saw throughout the event was actually an illusion created by Emma Frost so that his message could be portrayed. She wanted Scott's death to mean something and bring all the mutants together. Inhumans vs. X-Men Following the Death of X event, Beast continued to try and find a cure for the Terrigen Miss, but discovered that it was becoming more deadly to the mutants. Meanwhile, Emma is still angry over Scott's death and plans for war begin to brew. Finally, the mutants cast a vote of what they should do and it's decided that they need to destroy the Terrigen Mists for the good of the mutants. This leads to an all-out war against the inhuman nation that culminates on Myrrh Island. Emma seems even more bloodthirsty than usual, with Medusa realizing that the only way to end the war is to destroy the Terrigen Cloud and does so herself. With the cloud destroyed, 
a peace is established. With Medusa stepping down from the throne as she knows that her people will not understand her actions, it is also revealed that Emma faked Cyclops' death at the hands of Black Bolt, and she's forced him to go into hiding. Phoenix Resurrection! When strange psychic events begin to occur around the world, the X-Men are quick to investigate and theorize that the Phoenix Force is returning. As they try to fight against this and protect the young Jean Grey, they learn that the original Jean Grey is still alive, but has no memories of her past as a mutant. When the Phoenix arrives, it is revealed that the strange occurrences were actually Jean subconsciously sending out distress signals. With the X-Men defeated by the Phoenix, Jean finally confronts the cosmic being and demands that they stop bringing her back to life. The Phoenix finally agrees to leave Jean in peace, heading back out into space. Extermination! In the present day, the O5 X-Men are being hunted down by a villain known as Ahab. While the rest of the X-Men struggle to protect them, Cable appears to protect the young Bobby Drake and is killed in the process. It is revealed that the killer is a young Cable, who believes that his older self has failed in his mission to protect the timeline. I kind of agree with him. Have you seen how many times the timeline was broken? Throughout the storyline, it's revealed that the younger Cable is hunting down the O5 because they need to be put back in their original timeline before Ahab can kill them and alter history so that the mutants are wiped out. Finally agreeing, the O5 go back home with young Jean Grey locking away their memories of the future. With this done, the X-Men are able to defeat Ahab and his followers, and in the end, the O5 meet up and discuss what they now remember of their adventures, mourning the loss of Cyclops. But it is revealed that the young Cable is actually working with the resurrected Cyclops, who he believes should make his presence known once again. Hunt for Wolverine. At this point in the timeline, Logan has been dead for some time, but when his friends discover that the adamantium shell that he was trapped in has been broken open, they begin a massive search for him that leads through many twists and turns. However, it's revealed that most of the rumors are all a ruse, and Wolverine has actually been captured by a woman named Persephone. Captured, Logan reveals that he now has white hot claws and isn't overly happy about being captured. Return of Wolverine. Wolverine does actually return, though. We are shown that Wolverine is captured by a group known as Soterra, led by Persephone, and is experimented on with little of his own memories. As Wolverine attempts to escape the island prison with the help of a woman named Anna, he slowly begins to unlock his memories. The X-Men learn of Logan's reappearance, and they go to rescue him. But Logan is tricked into fighting them, and the X-Men must retreat due to his berserker rage. It is later revealed that Persephone has the mutant ability to raise the dead and imbue them with her own personality. She explains that she did this to Logan to use him in her plan for world domination, but his healing factor kicked in as she lost control of him. After bringing Logan to space, she tries to convince him to aid her in taking over the world. But Logan finishes unlocking his memories and turns against her, destroying her space station and falling back to Earth. Once he heals, he returns to the mansion. He rejoins the X-Men again. X-Men Disassembled. The Disassembled event saw Nate Gray and Legion gathering teams and fighting against one another while an anti-mutant vaccine was put into effect by the human government. Nate returns with the goal of killing any mutant that might pose a threat to the future of both human and mutant kind. Legion gathers his own team to fight against Nate and it culminates in a massive battle. In the final fight, Nate actually melds with Legion to become a godlike being. It is up to Jean Grey to pull them apart and destroy Nate. In his final moments, Nate uses his massive power to actually physically wipe out every X-Men. The event then jumps 10 years into the future, and we see the anti-mutant vaccine was put into place, effectively wiping out the X-Gene. Age of the X-Man! However, it is revealed that the X-Men didn't die. Shocker. With his last bit of energy, Nate created a new dimension where everyone was a mutant. But people began to remember the truth and turn against Nate. In the end, he offers to return them all to the real world and gives Magneto the ability to destroy Nate before he does. But Eric thanks Nate for giving him the world he could never have, and he decides to allow Nate to live in this dimension and returns to the 616 universe. Now, we move to the Krakoan Age, where the X-Men have established their own mutant nation once again, though this time they seem to be doing a much better job of it. This era was initially run by Jonathan Hickman, who laid the groundwork for the entire era before leaving. House of X, Powers of X. House of X and Powers of X were the first steps into the Krakoan era. In these dual storylines, we see Moira McTaggart is actually a mutant, and every time that she dies, she is reborn with all of her past memories, though she possibly only has 11 different lives to live. 
In the event, we see possible futures as Moira tries to find a way for the mutants to live in peace alongside humankind. But after several dark futures, we see that this may not be possible. Because of it, Moira enlists the aid of Charles Xavier and Eric Leshner, who establish the island nation of Krakoa. Using new technology, the mutant nation establishes the ability to make backup memories of all of the mutants and store them in Cerebro. They also use the abilities of five special mutants to begin a resurrection cycle, which means that the mutant nation has practically defeated death. When the mutants declare that Krakoa is its own nation outside of the laws of mankind, they reach out to the world to declare this, offering Krakoan grown medicine to mankind in exchange for peace. They also set up Krakoan grown portals in countries to allow the mutants safe passage to the island. The mutants also establish a ruling body in the Quiet Consul and establish the three laws of Krakoa. Parts of the world are against this idea and fight against the mutants, but no one is more against the island of Krakoa than Orcus, a human-first organization that sees mutants as the ultimate threat to mankind. X of Swords, which featured not enough swords. It is established that long ago, Krakoa was split into two, the island of Krakoa and the island of Arako. The mutants of Arako were lost when they were battling the demons of Emeth. Because of this, Apocalypse lost his original four horsemen, which were his children and wife. When Apocalypse puts into motion a plan to establish a portal to Arako, his children and fellow mutants invade the magical realm of Otherworld in an attempt to invade Krakoa and eventually return to Earth. Several mutants are fighting against the Iraqi forces in Otherworld, and they die. It is discovered that if a mutant dies in Otherworld, they cannot be resurrected. In an effort to stop the invasion of Earth, the mutants challenge Araki and Saturn 9, the ruler of Otherworld, declaring that the tournament should take place there. The champions are gathered and a tournament begins, though it quickly becomes apparent that the Krakoan mutants are no match for the Araki mutants. Scott Summers and Jean Grey decide to recruit a team of X-Men to travel to the Otherworld and save the Krakoan champions, going against the ruling of Saturn 9. During the final battle, Apocalypse fights against his children and wife, discovering that she was possessed by the demons of Emeth in an effort to save the Arrakai. He takes a hold of her Emeth mask and wears it, allowing him to command the demon forces and order them to surrender. With the war ended, Saturn 9 declares an exchange of prisoners will take place for good faith. Apocalypse returns to Krakoa, then returns to Emeth with his wife, while the rest of the Arrakai are allowed to stay on Krakoa. Eventually, the Arrakai would move to Mars and declare it the new Arrako. Inferno! The Inferno event from 2021 saw members of the Quiet Council and other mutants learn the truth about Moira McTaggart and how she has the ability to reset the timeline after she dies. That everything Charles and Eric have done is because she has witnessed and took part in making this future. As Emma steps away from the council, refusing to take part in Eric and Charles' lies, she speaks with Mystique and Destiny and learns of their past with Moira. But Moira is captured by Orcus and Eric and Charles are forced to try and save her, hoping to protect the Krakoan timeline that they have established. Meanwhile, we also learn that Orcus was established by the Omega Sentinel, who has come from the future where mutant kind always wins. Where they have taken control of Earth and in an attempt to stop them, humankind offered themselves to the machine gods from space. But the mutants were able to defeat the machine gods, so in an effort to stop them before they become too powerful, they sent the Omega Sentinel's consciousness back. When Charles and Eric fight their way through Orcus to rescue Moira, they discover that she is missing. We learn that she has been captured by Mystique and Destiny. And in the end of the event, Moira actually turns against Krakoa and signs with Orcus. Axe Judgment Day. When Droog becomes the Prime Eternal, he declares that the mutants are actually deviants and orders the Eternals to go to war against the mutant nation of Krakoa and Arako in space, formerly Mars. Krakoa is attacked by massive ancient Eternals, and Uranus the Undying is unleashed upon Arako for one hour. In this time, he manages to nearly wipe out all of the Mars mutants. As the war continues to rage, the Avengers, the X-Men, and the members of the Eternal decide to resurrect a fallen Celestial in hopes that it would actually order the Eternals to cease their attack. But the Progenitor declares that all of those on Earth no longer should be allowed to live, as they have put the Great Machine into jeopardy. What followed was Judgment Day, when the Progenitor would appear to every living being on the planet and judge them accordingly. If the bulk of the Earthlings pass the test, then the whole planet would be spared. The progenitor declares that Earth is not worth sparing and the end of days are beginning. Everyone must put aside their differences to fight this and in the end, Earth is restored and the eternal Ajax becomes the new celestial and declares the mutants are not deviants. In the end, Droog's war ended. 
but he unleashes Uranus one more time. But the Undying is stopped by Storm and Magneto, who dies in the battle. Sins of Sinister. After Judgment Day, Mr. Sinister finally puts his own plans into effect, and it is revealed that he has infected the Resurrection Pods and placed some of himself inside the Resurrected Mutants, making them far more sinister and on board of his grand scheme. It's also revealed that he created a Moira engine, which allows him to create save points in time like a video game so that he can alter the future and leave himself detailed notes for things to change. After murdering Hope so that his copies can begin to start his plans, the Sinister spread the resurrection protocols to all of mankind so that he can begin to infect them as well, quickly taking full control of the Earth and quietly defeating or replacing Earth's strongest heroes and villains. Storm learned of this and retreated to Arako. Sinister then created the Chimera, a powerful mutant with combined DNA of several mutants. But Sinister's goals were always constant. He wants to become a Dominion-level god so that the Dominion machines finally arrive on Earth and he can confront them and not be consumed by the machine god, so that his intelligence will live on forever. However, the Sinisters begin to work against Sinister, having their own goals in mind and displaying his high level of evil intelligence. Realizing his mistake in making them all as smart as himself, Sinister attempts to reset the timeline but is defeated and captured. Now he's forced to live in the future that he created. Now he must fight across a thousand years of this strange and horrible future until he finally reaches the final battle and sets himself for Dominion. But he discovers that there is already something there. Another of Nathaniel Essex's clones has reached Dominion before him. The timeline is finally reset and the events are beamed into Sinister's mind, allowing him to remember his greatest failure. It is Mother Righteous, another of the Nathan Essex clones, unknown to the rest of the mutants at this time, who also worked against Sinister in the Sinister timeline. She allies herself with Krakoa and imprisons Sinister for his crimes, though now she begins to work towards her own goals. The Fall of X! Finally. We have reached the fall of X, the end of the Krakoan era. During the Hellfire Gala, Orcus launches its final assault against mutant kind, either killing or banishing the mutants from Earth. And unable to resurrect, the remaining mutants on Earth begin a resistance movement, fighting against Orcus and their Stark Sentinels. Tony Stark ends up working alongside the mutants to fight against Orcus, a final plan being put into motion and the war against Orcus is about to begin. This also resolves a lot of plot lines that were created during the Crack Cohen era, such as what happened to Sinister? Well, he was apparently inside of Xavier's mind and the two of them are looking for a way to stop the end time, the Dominion version of Mr. Sinister. While that's going on, Nimrod is seemingly returning and there's an ancient AI coming from the future, the machine gods, working with Orcus in basically what it boils down to is everything happening here is going to reset the X-Men again so that you can jump on and read the X-Men in the summer. At the time of recording this video, Fall of X is coming to its conclusion, so I can't give you a definitive answer as to what is happening within it. Just know that it ends the Krek Cohen era. And that, my dear viewers, is the entire history of X-Men events since their inception. I recorded all of this in one sitting, and my voice is raw. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell me the next thing you want me to give you a massive recap on so that you know exactly how to start reading your favorite comics. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.